So I got this new G Fuel flavor called Pac-Man Power Pellet. It tastes just like a Cherry Jolly Rancher. It's electric. Literally didn't even know it existed. I saw that they dropped it and emailed them instantly. I was like, guys, I need it. And they're like, okay, here you go. Anyway, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and happy Tuesday. In today's video, I am going to be ranking every single starting running back from worst to best. So 32 all the way to one. Now I know I didn't do my running back stat predictions and I still might, but there's just a lot of crazy things that could happen and a lot of high predictions I have. And I feel like they're just way too unrealistic at this moment. So I figured doing this instead would be a lot less hectic. Do also want to say this is completely 100% my opinion, meaning if you disagree, don't email me, message me on Twitter, or come into my Twitch streams just to scream at me about a take. If you're that upset, respectfully get a life. Couple of quick plugs as always though, you can use code Wyatt's World on G Fuel or on Prize picks. G Fuel, it'll save 20% on any G Fuel products. Prize picks, it'll match up to $100 of your first deposit. But remember, always play responsibly and let's get into the video. All right, so here's the list and here's what we're working with. We got quite the tower to climb here. I really don't think we need to explain how this works. So without further ado, let's get into who I think is the 32nd ranked running back. If you're asking me, the worst starting running back currently in the league is Rashad White. And yeah, I know he didn't get to play a whole lot, but the little bit he did play, he either looked really good or really bad. On top of that, he only has like 400 rushing yards for his career, considering he was just a rookie behind Leonard Fournette. Like, I have nothing to say about him. Now we're on to 31. I hate to say this, but I gotta be honest, James Cook. I got a ton of praise for the guy. I think he has so much potential, but he really just hasn't played enough for me to give him credit over hardly anybody in the league. Now we're on to number 30, and I'm gonna probably give it to Brian Robinson. I have never personally been impressed with the guy, and for anybody who's been watching me for a while, you guys would know that I am well past the point of giving him bonus points because he was previously shot. If he picks it up, that's great, but 800 rushing yards and under four yards a carry with only two touchdowns is nothing to praise. Now we're on to 29. Raheem Mostert, Mostert, whatever. The guy's never been bad. Injuries have always kind of affected him, and now he's just on a team that flat out doesn't really need him. I feel like certain games, you know, he'll pop off for a touchdown or two, and then he'll go four weeks where he tops out at 30 rushing yards. And that'll bring us to number 28, and that's where I bring in Mr. Cam Akers. Like I have stressed, man, he ended last season on such a high note that I am forced to give him some credibility, and I actually am a believer in him again. I think this year he's gonna do really good, but how high can we put him because he had four elite games to cap off the year, you know? All right, moving on to number 27, it is James Conner. Listen, man, I've been pretty harsh on him over and over again, but I feel like I have also given him credit where it's due. He's not the worst running back in the league, but he is far from the best. He can make good catches, he's got some power in his legs, but he's just not the best at anything that he does, you know what I mean? He has had a good career though, like 4,000 total rushing yards and 44 touchdowns, there's no arguing that. All right, moving on to 26, we've got Khalil Herbert. Dante Foreman should never touch the ball unless he's hurt. This guy is so damn good, but he's just never gotten the volume because he's been sitting behind David Montgomery. Go look up anytime David has been hurt and this guy filled in, he was a god. And now we're on to 20. J.K. Dobbins. He would be much higher if he wasn't hurt all the time. I'm almost starting to wonder if Baltimore is going to give him, you know, a limited workload just to preserve his health. Because if you go look at his stats, like, dude, he's one of the most productive running backs in the league. The guy averages nearly six yards a carry. Statistically, you give him the ball twice, he's going to get you a first down every single time. But also, statistically, you give him the ball more than four times a game, he is going down with an injury, and it sucks. Now we're on to 24. Jameer Gibbs. I know nothing about the guy other than the fact that he went to Alabama. What I do know, though, is he's going to be going into a system that aggressively uses him. And back on the trend of being from Alabama, running backs that come out of Alabama are usually pretty damn good. Derrick Henry, Mark Ingram, Josh Jacobs, Najee. Even though I don't really like that guy, that's just a few within in recent history. 23, Brees Hall. He looked fantastic. He looked explosive. He looked like he could do it all before he got hurt last year. And I believe he is going to fit right back into the spot he was, especially with the better quarterback. Why would I have him at 23? Well, because he got hurt after seven games. Like how much credit can we give the guy? He looked really good. Assuming he'll take over, like I said, but uh, what if this injury wrecked him? We don't know. 
And that'll bring us to 22. Joe Mixon, he's taking a huge drop, about 20 spots. Never had him that high, but I, I believe he probably did nearly crack my top five. Look, I still think the guy has a lot of talent. I still think he's a fine runner. But last year, his production did fall off, and I don't know what the reasoning was for it. And going into this year, he's been battling a lot of off-field issues. So I feel like it could possibly affect his playing time, too. I, I just don't expect a big year from him. 21, Javante Williams. I know, he got hurt pretty much right away last year, and I have no reason to be this high on him still, but I am. His rookie season, I was very impressed with him. Not only did he rush for 900 yards at that time, but he caught for like 303 touchdowns on top of it. 20, Damian Pierce. I drafted him in fantasy last year, so I watched him very, very closely up until his injury, and I loved what I saw out of him. He looked like a hard runner. He looked like a more modern prime Frank Gore. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the biggest guy. He's not the strongest guy. But that fucker will run until his wheels fall off. 19, Pikachu. For a Kansas City Chiefs running back, I felt like I was watching Jamal Charles again, man. I haven't seen somebody like this on that team in a very long time. And I think Chiefs fans now at this point can kind of kick Clyde to the curb and say, okay, yeah, he never really was that good because this is what a good running back looks like. He'll break a thousand this year and I could even see him injecting himself into the top 10 conversation. And now we're on to 18. DeAndre Swift is a guy that gets a lot of shit because he never has a lot of rushing yards, but he's a guy that you look more into his receiving. You'll understand why he's so good. He does everything. He's like Austin Eckler, except not used as much. This year he had 99 carries, 500 yards, 5.5 yards a bump, and five touchdowns. That's just his rushing. He caught another 48 passes for 300 yards and three more touchdowns on top of that. Like, the guy is a stud. Jamal Williams is the only reason this guy had a quiet year. All right, 17, Bijan Robinson. I know that's gonna be way too high for a guy who hasn't played, but I think the middle is appropriate for the spark he is supposed to bring into this league. Going into the draft, he was the only running back that I paid attention to. Going into the draft, he was the only running back that I heard people constantly fighting over. He's six foot, 215 pounds, just lit it up at Texas. I expect big things from this young man. 16, Najee Harris. Let's get the negatives out of the way, okay? Yeah, concrete shoes, it looks like the guy moves like he is a damn robot sometimes. It looks like he doesn't know how to play his position sometimes. His yards per carry is trash. You know, I can rib him for these things all I want, but if you look at the good in Najee Harris, the guy is healthy. He doesn't get hurt. He hasn't been hurt. The guy's not only a running back, but he's capable of catching and he is a big guy. On top of everything, for how consistent he's been, he's been behind one of the worst offensive lines in football. So, you know, we have reason to believe this year he's gonna take a proper kick up. But I just can't look at him and not talk about the fact that he looks like Bender from Futurama running up the field. 15, Elvin Kamara. Taking a little bit of a fall down as well. You know, he's never been a thousand yard rusher, but he has been a guy who's usually scoring more than two touchdowns. He's a guy who usually catches the ball more than 57 times. He's also a guy who is under criminal investigation right now and might be missing part of the year, which is obviously gonna affect his numbers. I think he's still good, but I just, I, there's other guys that I would put over him. 14, Ramondre Stevenson. He's another guy who can do anything you need him to do. He almost had 1,500 all-purpose yards last year. If they use him as a true number one with no interruptions, the guy will be top 10 absolutely undisputedly. 13, Kenneth Walker. A lot of speed, a lot of power. Only started 11 games, finished with 1,050 yards and nine touchdowns out of that. Guy looks like he gets shot out of a cannon when he leaves the pocket. He truly is the definition of electric. Now we're on to number 12, I'll give it to Tony Pollard. One of the better running backs in football, obviously at this point, anybody I'm naming off is one of the better running backs in the league. He's a dual threat though, he's shifty, he cuts good. Wouldn't be shocked this year if I see him pass up a couple of people as well. Now we got 11, Miles Sanders, give him the credit. He had always been productive in terms of yardage, he just didn't play a ton, whether he was hurt or he just wasn't in the scheme up until this last year in Philly where he popped off. I don't think he's top 10, but 11 or 12 seems like more than a fair spot for him. Number 10, Travis Etienne. I think he is great, he is so explosive and he is so clean with everything that he does, so smooth. Missed his entire first year, then everyone forgot about him, came back this year, stole James Robinson's job, and to me, made himself a top 10 running back in football. 1100 yards, five rushing touchdowns, also caught for 300 more yards. Number nine, Aaron Jones. Still a believer, probably always will be a believer. Just because he doesn't get touchdowns doesn't mean he's lost his step. It means he's lost opportunities. The guy ran for like 1,200, caught for 400, and I think he caught five touchdowns as well. Same Aaron Jones he's always been. Up next, we got number eight, and that's Josh Jacobs. People are gonna be pissed about it, but eight is literally a great number. The guy played out of his mind last year. He was terrific. I don't think he's ever gonna do that again, but he'll be above a 1,000 again, 
because he has previously. Now we're on to seven, Austin Eckler. Look, I know people are gonna be debating why he's above Jacobs in this and that. I'll tell you right now. Because the guy catches 100 fucking passes in a year, as well as runs for 13 touchdowns and nearly 1,000 yards. He's literally working two jobs at one time. Like, Austin Eckler is so, so underrated. I think seven is honestly too low. All right, number six, Jonathan Taylor. People have really started to disrespect him and forget his name, apparently. Do you guys not understand how good this guy is? We're talking about a guy who is averaging 5.1 yards a carry after three years in the league. We're talking about a guy who averaged 106 yards a game in 2021. Yet people want to bash him because last year he was injured. And people want to bash him because he wasn't good in fantasy. I swear to God, everybody who's forgot about this man is going to be going, oh yeah, he's actually really good. And I'm going to sit here like this. No shit. All right, up next at number five, we got Delvin. I'll still give it to him. I, like I've said, I thought he was kind of slowing down, still kind of think he might be, but that's just natural. Still has the dirtiest footwork in the game. Still probably one of the fastest guys overall. Still think he has two, three, maybe four elite years left in him, but I just don't think he is the guy we had in 2020, and I don't think he'll ever return. Number four, Seishuan. I'm done apologizing. I've done it too many times. We all know the guy's elite now. He's gonna continue to be one of the biggest parts of that New York offense as long as he continues to play there, which I still don't know if they've resolved that issue or not. But after last season, I gotta give him the respect. He looked very special. Now we're on to three. Run CMC. The guy doesn't get hurt. He's fucking outstanding. Always has been. And the thing to look forward to to this year, he only got to play like half the season in San Fran last year. This year, he's gonna have a full year, man. I bet you he is going to be really, really good. I do hope they continue to use Elijah Mitchell, though for two reasons. One, because he's really good as well, but for two, to preserve his health. Number two, Derek. The guy is ridiculous. Goes from 1,500 yards to 2,000 yards, snaps his foot, misses half a season, and then comes back this year, throws up 1,500 yards and 13 more touchdowns. I don't think the man even understood he was gone. I I'll take that back. He actually did start off pretty slow, but by mid-season, he was the King Henry again. And finally, number one, you guys already knew it before the video started. The best running back in the league is Nick Chubb. The most dominant, the most attractive, the most downright handsome running back in the league is Nick Chubb. Dude, he has been so ungodly godly good. If you are asking me right now, I think Nick Chubb is more of a first ballot Hall of Famer than anybody in the top five on this list. I'm not saying these guys aren't, but I'm saying I would put Nick Chubb in the hall before any of these guys with how his career is going right now. And of course has to keep going and end like that, but he's ridiculous. Gotta remember Derrick Henry had two years where he sat around with a thumb in his ass. Anyway, guys, that is going to be it for my top 32 NFL running backs. Of course, you guys are going to disagree. So nicely, you can let me know in the comments and we can maybe debate. But if you're going to get upset about it, again, I will not care. If you guys did enjoy this video, you already know what to do to show support. Comment, like, subscribe, turn that bell on. I do my best to post on this channel every single day. But with everything I just said, I got to hop off and get this edited so you guys can watch it on time. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesdays. And as always, I will see you in the next video.